Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl McColgan, founder of Heal, Nourish, Grow, and today I want to revisit the chaffle with you. So I made my original video because I had seen them all over Instagram, didn't know there was an actual recipe, quote unquote, I guess there sort of is, but it's just egg and cheese. So I think anybody can figure that out. And there's a couple ways you can do it. So the first way that I did it, I really intended to eat that chaffle as a waffle. And so I like, my waffle's a little fluffier. So I used a little cheese. I used just about the whole egg, which made a bit of a mess and some more cheese on top. One of the ways that you can work with that is, it definitely depends on the size egg you use, because I've experimented with this a couple of times now. If you use a smaller medium egg, it fits in the waffler pretty well. If you're using a large egg, then you're gonna wanna stop before you use it all if you're making a fluffy waffle, or you're gonna split it into two to use for buns, which is what I'm going to do today. So for the buns, I also decided I'd get a little bit more precise with the amount of cheese. Also mentioned with the cheese, a commenter said, you know, they put potato starch in cheese. Yes, that's true in shredded cheese. They do add potato starch. It generally adds less than one carb. If you are sensitive to that or you're doing super strict keto, with no kind of additional ingredients like that, you definitely want to avoid it. Just get a block of cheese, grate it up. For me personally, I use this type of cheese so rarely and in such small quantities, it really doesn't bother me at all that there's a little potato starch in there. But anyway, as all things keto, do what works for you. And don't let the keto police come after you if you decide to use some shredded cheese that has a tiny bit of potato starch. Um, but anyway, for today's, like I said, I'm gonna make buns. And I wanted to get a little bit more precision with the cheese for you so that you know kind of how much to use. I know some people aren't comfortable with just gauging it. Um, also, after a couple of experiments, the amount of cheese that you use does affect the crispiness. So if you're using it for a bun, I would say it's slightly more cheese. If you're using it for a waffle, you can use slightly less. And going back to that first waffle, personally, I've been trying to cut down on dairy in my life. So I found that using most of the egg and just a little bit of cheese, I'm personally real happy with that. If you want to split it into two, use as much cheese as you like. That's totally cool too. Um, but for a nice crisp bun, first you're going to want to oil your waffler. I like to use um, avocado oil on mine. So I've already put that in there. It's already heated up. So now I'll just bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see the actual amount of cheese that goes on here so that you can eyeball it if you're not a measurer. Again, this is um, what you want to use for kind of a crispy, um, a crispy bun. So here is a tablespoon of cheese and you want to sprinkle it over here as evenly as possible and you have a little bit of time to spread it around or you can place it in like in little increments in each spot. And then you want to just take half of a beaten egg and the amount that you're looking to get in there is about half, but again, depending on the size of your egg, that could vary. So just gauge it until it just about fills up the waffler, but you can still see some black. And then you'll top it with the same amount of cheese, which is either a tablespoon or a kind of eyeball it. A tablespoon will give you like just about the right coverage to get a little bit of cheese all over the small waffler. Okay, and then keeping the edges as clean as possible and then just shut it. And so now we'll wait here for a little bit until it's finished. So you'll notice it's starting to steam and that's when it starts to puff up on the inside. And then again, if you didn't want this as crispy, you want it more of a waffle, you can still make it for about a minute. You'll notice it's real fluffy and not quite crispy yet, but since we're making buns today, I'm gonna go ahead and let it cook for about another minute. So two minutes all together for buns. Okay, just about at two minutes now. You can see it's starting to get a little bit more crispy. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds. Okay, and now when it's about 30 seconds, you can actually start to smell the cheese and now we're done. So if you let this cool off a little bit, it kind of deflates and it gets a little harder and it really makes a fantastic sandwich bun. And this one was definitely husband approved. You can see the uh, sandwich that I made him with this in the opening picture. Thank you for watching. I hope that gave you some more clarity on how 
to make a chaffle. You can do a lot of different variations with this. You can try different things. You can use more egg less egg. I mean, the main thing is, do you want a big mess? If you have a larger waffle iron, of course, that's not an issue. You can put it all in the middle, use a whole egg, pour it in there. You could cut it in half to use for a bun. So tons of options. So never be afraid to experiment for yourself. I don't like to use a lot of rules in cooking. I mean, there's certainly certain things that work better than others, but just experiment and have fun with it. Uh, I made a dairy-free chaffle, which is more like just a bacon and egg thing <laughs> made in the waffler. Uh, so you can do lots of different things with it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it helped you. Be sure to visit healnourishgrow.com for more articles, recipes, tips, and tricks to help you live your best life and find your ultimate wellness. So I'll see you again soon.